Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, part one of fluid mechanics, we will discuss Archimedes principle. And in my next video, we will see solved problems related to Archimedes principle and principle of flotation. Archimedes was a Greek mathematician, physicist, engineer, inventor, and astronomer. One of his contributions to science, known as Archimedes principle, is the main concern of this lesson. One of the important facts about this Archimedes principle is that when a body is wholly or partially submerged in a fluid, it's acted upon by an upthrust or a buoyant force. This object is suspended in air, there is tension in the supporting string, and there is reading of this spring balance. The tension in the string, which is the same as the reading of the spring balance, is equal to the weight of the object, and the tension one is the weight of the object in air. But if the object is submerged in, in water, there is a different reading for the reading of this scale. This reading will be less than the reading of this one. T2 will be less than T1. And we conclude that when the object is submerged in a fluid, it experiences an upward force known as upthrust or buoyant force. T2 plus buoyant force is equal to Fg. This T2 is weight in fluid plus buoyant force is equal to weight in air. And we see that buoyant force is equal to weight in air minus weight in fluid. According to Archimedes, the magnitude of this buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. When the object is immersed in a fluid, it displaces some fluid, and the weight of that fluid displaced is equal to the magnitude of the buoyant force. So buoyant force is equal to weight of fluid displaced. There are two important relations that we should focus. Weight of fluid displaced is equal to, you know, weight is mass times gravity, mass is density times volume times gravity. So weight of displaced fluid can be written as density of the fluid, volume of the fluid times G. And buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid, volume of the fluid times G. In our previous slide, we have seen that buoyant force is weight in air minus weight in the fluid. And Weight in air is mass of the body times g. Mass of the body means density of the body times volume of the body. Look at these two important relations. What you know about the fluid can be used for the object, or what you know about the object can be used for the fluid by using these two important terms here. And Archimedes is supposed to have made this discovery when stepping into his bus, causing him to exclaim Eureka. So this is very important turning point. There are two important cases. When the object is totally submerged in uh, the fluid, then the volume of the fluid displaced is equal to the volume of the body. The volume of the fluid and volume of the body are the same. So weight of fluid displaced, which is buoyant force, is equal to density of the fluid, volume of the fluid times g. So if the object is completely submerged below the uh, surface of the liquid, then the volume of the fluid displaced will be equal to the volume of the body. And buoyant force is equal to weight of fluid displaced. Therefore, buoyant force can be written as density of the fluid, volume of the body times g. If the object is completely below the surface, you can re replace the volume of the displaced fluid by the volume of the body. The other case is the case of flotation. If an object floats, it can float in a fluid in two different ways. One, with some part of its volume above the surface. The other part of the volume will be below the surface. Or it could also float this way, completely below the surface, but without touching the bottom of the container. It floats somewhere in the fluid, but without touching the bottom of the container. These two cases refer uh, the case of flotation of an object. So, if an object floats, the buoyant force it experiences must be equal to the gravitational force. There is no other force. In this case, the buoyant force and gravitational force are the same. So for flotation, according to the principle of flotation, the weight of entire floating body must be equal to weight of the displaced fluid. Fg is equal to Fb, mass of the body, mass of the fluid, replaced by density times volume, you have this one. G cancelled by G, then density of the body, volume of the body is equal to density of the fluid times volume of the fluid. So for flotation, density of the body, volume of the body is equal to density of the fluid, volume of the fluid. Volume of displaced fluid in this case is the volume of the body below the surface. 
In this particular case, it is this part of the volume that displaced the fluid. Therefore, the volume of the displaced fluid will be equal to the volume of the body below the surface. But in this case, the volume of the displaced fluid will be equal to the volume of the body itself because it's completely below the surface. So, for partially submerged object, the volume of the fluid and volume of uh, the object below the surface are the same. For completely submerged object, the volume of the body and the volume of the body and the volume of the fluid are the same. So if you use this particular case in here, for the case where the object floats in a liquid having its total volume below the surface, then the volume of the body and the volume of the fluid are the same. These two cancel and we get density of the body and density of the fluid to be equal. So if the density of an object and density of a fluid are equal, then the object floats somewhere in the fluid with its whole volume below the surface. Let's see a couple of conceptual questions. Uh, question 1. Consider a body held in a fluid is released after being completely immersed in the fluid. What can you say about the density of the body and that of the fluid if the object starts accelerating upward and starts accelerating downward? In both cases, the net force is buoyant force plus the gravitational force. This is not simple addition, it's vector addition. So the net force taking upward positive buoyant force minus gravitational force. Buoyant force is given by density of the fluid, volume of the fluid times g. Gravitational force or weight of the object is density of the body, volume of the body times g. But in both cases, the object is completely submerged, so the volume of the fluid can be taken as the volume of the body. So volume of the body times g are equal, taking out uh, vb times g, we get this expression. If the body is accelerating upward, then the acceleration and net force will have the same direction. We conclude that density of the fluid is greater than density of the body. But if it accelerates downward, you know, acceleration downward, net force is negative. If the net force is negative, then the density of the fluid is less than the density of the body. Will a ship ride higher or lower in an ocean as compared to that of fresh water? The ship is in water, you can see here, assuming that ocean water is denser than uh, fresh water. Whether the ship rides higher or sinks deeper in a fluid is determined by the density of the fluid. In both cases, as the object floats, the buoyant force, that is the weight of the displaced fluid, must be equal to the entire, the weight of the entire floating body. So, you can have any fluid here, as long as this object floats in the fluid, the weight of the entire floating body, the ship, must be equal to the buoyant force that it experiences. So, both buoyant forces in ocean and in freshwater must be equal to the weight of the entire floating body. So, in this case, the object experiences the same buoyant force in ocean and in fresh water. This is a very important concept. But buoyant force is written as density of the fluid, volume of the fluid times g. Buoyant force in ocean, density of ocean, volume of ocean times g. Density of fresh water, volume of fresh water times g. The g's cancel out. If you take volume of fresh water over volume of ocean, density of ocean over density of this. Then again, if we crisscross, volume of fresh water will be equal to density of ocean, density of fresh water times volume of ocean. As density of ocean water is greater than density of fresh water, this number is greater than 1, therefore volume of fresh water will be greater than the volume of the ocean. We are talking about displaced liquid. The volume of displaced fresh water is greater than the volume of displaced ocean water, meaning that more water is displaced when it floats in fresh water than it floats in ocean water, meaning it floats higher in ocean water than in fresh water. This is very important conclusion. In question number three, the last question, if the density of a body is greater than density of water, can you conclude that the body sinks in water? The answer is no. Because the conditions that must be satisfied for a body to float in a fluid, in any fluid, is that the buoyant force on it must be equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So if the weight of the fluid that the body displaces is equal to its own weight without regard to its density, it can be made to float. A common example is a ship that floats in water. You have a ship that floats in water. Uh, some part of the ship is below the surface of water, and that amount of water, that weight of water displaced, must be equal to the weight of the entire floating body. So the buoyant force, the weight of the displaced liquid, is equal to Fg. As long as this condition is satisfied, this object floats in water. So this ship is made up of an object 
obviously having a density greater than that of water but it is made to float in water thank you so much in my next video i will come with examples on archimedes principle and principle of flotation please subscribe like and share to get more video thank you